Here are four big YouTubers who were sponsored by Wargaming to play World of Tanks. Do you notice something in common about all of their setups? The difference between a standard UI and one that's fully customized in World of Tanks is absolutely staggering. Not only can you remove so much of the clutter from your screen, but you can gain a whole wealth of information that can allow you to make better tactical decisions. So here's how to set everything up just the way that I like it. So firstly, there's a whole series of options to change the way that you interact with people or how you can be notified inside World of Tanks. You can either choose to only accept invitations from friends inside the garage, or by unchecking here you can decide disable Wargaming's dynamic platoon system in the battle if you don't want to join a group. Furthermore, if you're a solitary kind of individual, then you can also decline all friends requests by unchecking here, and also if you feel like you're getting bothered after the battle when you've hopefully beaten somebody really badly and they're a little bit tilt, then you can choose to only receive messages from people inside your contact list. Believe it or not, something that a lot of people overlook is that you can actually choose what kind of battles you fight in World of Tanks. Everybody has to participate in the standard battle type, but if you're so inclined after you reach tier 6, you can choose whether you want to participate in Encounter or Assault. Personally, I enjoy both of these game modes because they add a lot of variety to the game for me, but at the start you might want to turn these off until you feel a little bit more confident. One of the best things about Water Tanks is that you can record every single one of your battles and then simply re-watch them. To be able to do that, enable battle recording, and then you'll find as you play games afterwards they're saved inside your replays folder inside your World of Tanks folder. And to be able to watch the battle back again, simply double click on it, or you can drag and drop it onto worldoftanks.exe. Now on to the really important stuff. You can enable or disable the optics effect inside your sniper mode here. I like to disable it because I feel it just clutters the interface and you really don't need that extra confusion. There is also an option to use a dynamic camera. What this does is it adds some feedback and shake to the screen whenever you fire a shot. I personally like to have this disabled apart from when I'm watching replays and make them want to look cool. But there is one very important option that I think that you should at least try out in World of Tanks and see if it works out for you and that is the horizontal stabilization inside the sniper mode. So without horizontal stabilization inside your sniper mode, when you turn your tank to your left and to the right, it also turns the reticle as well, which is very annoying if you want to make some ducking and weaving maneuvers. Let's say I want to advance at this E100 and aim inside sniper mode and also wiggle my tank. There's absolutely no way for me to be able to do that. However, if I go into the options and I enable the horizontal stabilization inside the sniper mode, now we can see that if I aim at the E100 and I turn my tank to the left and to the right, it barely moves my reticle so I can keep shooting the target. And if I want to advance towards him and duck and weave, it also adjusts the aim of the turret for me so I can keep aiming at the target inside sniper mode to pull off precise shots. And so it's definitely something that I recommend using. Next up, let's take a look at the extra levels of zoom. If I turn off the 16 and 25 zoom, then the maximum amount of zoom inside World of Tanks is eight times. And eight times at long range can be very awkward for when you're trying to pull off sniping shots at 500 meters. However, if we go in, we enable the 16 to 25 time zoom. This means that we can go in again and again, and then that means that you can actually aim at weak points of enemy tanks at long range. Next, a couple of things which are very useful are to display the arc of your self-propelled gun on the minimap, and importantly also, the camera direction in which you're looking. This minimap line can be so unbelievably useful for quickly aiming at targets. I'm looking at my minimap pretty much 70% of the time, and so I can use that to align up with my next tank and then go into the sniper mode and aim at him, which is a lot quicker than when you're in your sniper mode and trying to look around for where the tiger two might possibly be. Also, one awesome thing about this feature is you can actually align up to see where the enemy tanks are who are outside your render distance, and then you can be prepared when you move towards them to try and find shots when they appear. And the minimap line can also be incredibly useful for continuing to aim at tanks that just leave your render range, and even pull off snipes at tanks that you can no longer physically see on your screen. Next, let's take a look at some of the most important things to enable in World of Tanks. Number one, 
always enable your expanded minimap features. Firstly, it will place all of the names of the vehicles on the minimap, which can be incredibly useful for deciding where that dangerous enemy tank destroyer is. And also, you'll notice that when tanks are no longer spotted, that they fade out and become a tiny little circle on the map, but you can still see the name of where they were last known. Using this information can let you know where the enemies are entrenched, or if it's safe to try and make a flanking maneuver without getting caught by a hidden tank destroyer. Next up, there are three checkboxes which I thoroughly recommend enabling in World of Tanks. These provide you with three rings on your minimap. The green ring you see here is a dynamic indication of how good your view range is, which also takes into account things like binoculars, and if the enemy has zero camo rating, then you will see the tank at the green ring. Next is the white ring. This is the maximum view range that you can spot a target in World of Tanks, which is 445 meters. This means that even if you've got the most skilled commander in the game and you've got 500 meters view range, you are never going to see a tank beyond 445 meters. This is the maximum spotting distance in World of Tanks. And finally, we have the yellow ring. The yellow ring indicates what vehicles will render on your screen. Here we can clearly see that a tier 10 self-propelled gun on the enemy team is spotted, but I can't see him because he's outside the 564 meter render range in the game. This ring can be especially useful to see just how much further you have to go when you use it with the, the minimap line to be able to spot a friendly or enemy tank. Now we're moving on to my graphical settings of World of Tanks, and now this will completely depend on what computer you have. If you have a very good computer, then you can pretty much max everything to play World of Tanks. While if you're playing on a laptop or a less powerful desktop, then you might want to turn some of the settings down to be able to get extra frame rate. There are a few things that I recommend changing to give you an advantage irrelevant of how powerful your computer is, however. Number one, turn off grass inside sniper mode. This can be incredibly distracting and prevent you from being able to pinpoint the enemy's location. And I also recommend you do the same for extra effects inside sniper mode. Sure, loads of smoke bellowing out of your destroyed enemies is rather entertaining and immersive, but it's going to prevent you from killing subsequent enemies as you can't pinpoint them through the clouds. And it's the same deal for flora density. I like to turn that to the bare minimum to try and get rid of as much vegetation as I possibly can. One other option that I like to have checked is foliage transparency. When you enable this, it actually makes the bush completely transparent when you get close to it. And the reason why I like to enable this is because when I pull back behind the bush and it now becomes opaque, I know I can shoot through it safely while using its maximum camo rating. And that's probably only going to make sense to the most experienced of you out there, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about shooting through bushes to remain hidden, then you probably want to stay tuned to the channel because I'll be doing a full tank better on how to use bushes and camo rating. Sound wise, there's very few things that I like to customize. Personally, I like to get rid of the music in the battle and the garage as I find it a bit distracting and the ambience as well. But one of the most fun features for me is to enable national crew voices. Czechoslovakian, American, and British at the end there. But remember, if you can't speak all those languages and you can't understand what your crew is telling you, then you might want to use the standard voices. For me personally, I'll forgo this for a little bit of immersion anyway. Control-wise, I don't think you really need to customize too much in World of Tanks, apart from I believe having requesting fire on your T key is very convenient, and it's certainly one of the most useful abilities to use. Reticle-wise, there are so many choices to make inside World of Tanks. V-shaped, T-shaped, O-shaped, I-shaped. It's whatever you fancy, really. Personally, I like to use the aiming point. You can also change the circle that surrounds where your reticle is if you want to have a solid one or if you want to have it without a load indicator, if you want to have it with a shifting load indicator or with a regular load indicator. And while the central marker is where you're looking on your screen, the gun marker is where your tank is actually aiming at and maybe you've auto-aimed at a target and left it behind to continue to engage while you have a look around. The gun marker is a lot more interesting. There are three options. You can have a regular aim point, you can have an aim point with a load indicator telling you when it's time to click, or alternatively, and I think probably one of the most useful ones, especially for a new player, to have an aim point with an armor penetration indicator. So the penetration indicator can be incredibly useful for a player who doesn't yet have an encyclopedic knowledge of the enemy's armor thicknesses. Here we're going to engage a T62A. You'll see that the red point turns to green when I can hit his hull armor, but when I shoot at his turret here, it changes to orange. And as we can see, we're going to ricochet off. And if you have absolutely no chance of penetrating the enemy tank, then the indicator will change to red. Next up, let's take a look at the marker options in World of Tanks. And 
For the standard vanilla loadout, it pretty much looks a lot like this. The only thing that you absolutely have to have above the enemy tank is the indicator whether it's a heavy tank, a medium tank, or a light tank. However, it can be fun to have the damage that the vehicle has received appear. It can also be nice to have a health bar above the tank so you can clearly see how much it has left. Because of course you want to try and prioritize your low health targets first to take them out of the game. Next up, if you can't physically see the tank but you still want to know what vehicle it is over its silhouette, then why not click the vehicle model as well? Now you know exactly what tank it is. And if you're not feeling too familiar with all of the tank names yet, you can also have vehicle tank. Tier. This is a tier 7 heavy tank. Next, you can also get an indication of the vehicle's health. You can either use health points left, health points left over total health points, or you can use health points percentage. Now, there's absolutely no reason to be using percentage health left. You might as well be using health points left over total hit points, and this is why. Firstly, if you know the enemy's remaining hit points, then you can figure out what kind of a chance you have to kill them with the alpha damage of your gun. For example, are you shooting at a tank with 400 hit points and you have a 500 alpha damage gun? Well, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to kill him unless you roll ultra low. Maybe you're engaging a tank with a thousand hit points and you're playing in the tier 10 French medium tank, the Banche Chantillon, where you need three shells to be able to kill him. It's ultra important to use this information to be able to figure out how quickly you're going to be able to kill the enemy tanks to be able to predict how much damage you're going to have to take to do so. And so you might be asking, well, why do you need to know the vehicle's total hit points? Well, that can be very useful to know what turret the enemy tank is using. Let's take the Tiger, for example. With the top turret equipped, it has 1,000 500 hit points. However, if it doesn't have the top turret equipped, it has 1,400 hit points. And remember, you can't use that top 88mm gun unless you also have the top turret unlocked. And so what this means is that if you see a Tiger with 1,400 hit points, the maximum amount of penetration he can have is 145. Whereas, of course, if he's got 1,500 hit points with the top turret, to all intents and purposes, it's likely he is using the top gun, which has got 203 millimeters of penetration. So a big difference there, and you can use that to try and figure out which opponents are weaker and try and take advantage of it. And so I recommend you have your setup like this. By default, you'll be able to see the hit points of the remaining vehicle, their total hit points and the tank name. And when you press your Alt key, it will change the vehicle model to the player's name. This can be very useful if you're in a platoon. Instead of saying, shoot the tiger, there might be multiple tigers in front of you. You can say, shoot tanker one, two, three to combine your focus fire and hopefully take him out quickly. I use this setup for the enemy team and also for our team, but for the destroyer, it's different. You don't really need to see the health points left of a destroyed tank. They're dead anyway, right? They've got zero. And so I recommend disabling everything and hiding the health bar to remove some of the clutter and just leave the vehicle model and the player's name when you hold alt. And finally, let's take a look at the latest addition to World of Tanks, the feedback system. Firstly, for the fire direction indicator, choose the advanced view. This will give you information about every single shot that you receive from the enemy team, detailing what tank it was, whether it managed to penetrate you, whether it ricocheted off you. So here we go in the mouse, we get hit by a TVP, we can see 320 blocked, 640 blocked, the mouse hits us for 517, the E50M crits us, and the TVP actually block bounces three shells off us for 960, followed up by an IS-7 bounce. And you can even use this to pinpoint where unspotted enemy tanks are. We can tell that there was a Cromwell Berlin who just shot me that Pepperdy is playing. And what this also allows you to do is look, if we align the black with the white just perfectly, we can almost pinpoint where we got hit from. On the damage tab, if you activate all of these options, you have a wealth of information available to you. Number one, all of the damage that you have dealt to the enemy team during this battle, which can be very useful if you're trying to get a mark of excellence or if you're trying to chase a high caliber medal. Next up, the amount of damage that you've blocked during this battle. Are you getting close to that steel wall achievement or maybe you're trying to do one of the personal missions? And finally, the amount of spotting and detracking that you're doing, which can make it feel immensely rewarding to play a light tank. And finally, Finally, the battle events display, which is a log of absolutely everything that is happening in the battle. This can detail how many base defense points you got if you're trying to get a defender medal, if you're capturing the enemy base, if you're trying to get an invader medal, how many vehicles you spotted if you're trying to get a scout medal, and for the arsonists out there, how much fire damage you are doing to your opponents. And really, that about covers it. This entire guide was dedicated to try and reduce some of the clutter that you have to put up with in-game, while providing you with additional information so you can make more educated 
calculated decisions to how the battle is going to play out to try and increase your win ratio. And so I really hope this video was useful to you and you maybe even enjoyed it as well. If you did, please consider giving it a like. It really helps the channel out. And stay tuned to the channel because I have a whole series of videos detailing, should we say, more complicated aspects of World of Tanks coming very soon. And I'm looking forward to checking out your feedback in the comments, whether you think I've missed anything out, whether you think that this is looking like a good direction for the series. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.